So, hello everybody, my name is Daniela Blechner, I'm an author, book journey mentor, founder of a company called Conscious Dreams Publishing. We work with authors from all over the world who have powerful messages and stories to share and help them to get their books out so that they can share their messages of value and significance. Over the last four years we've published over 70 books, some of which you can see on the two bookshelves behind me here. Um, we've mentored over 180 authors and aspiring authors helping them, assisting them in developing their skill set in writing, publishing, social media, branding, public speaking, and most importantly, confidence. I'm absolutely passionate about providing a platform for unseen, unheard authors so that they can get their stories out there, so they can educate, inspire, and empower for generations to come. I don't know about you, but I am not happy with the stats that we're seeing at the moment. I publish everybody as long as they have work that educates, inspires and empowers, but I'm extra specially passionate about publishing books from black authors, or as we know, B-A-M-E authors. 1%, it's now risen to 5% of protagonist characters in children's fiction are from B-A-M-E backgrounds. 7% of background, background characters in children's fiction are from B-A-M-E backgrounds. So I feel absolutely passionate about changing the paradigm because to me that's not acceptable because when you can't see yourself represented in books, films, in, in, in all kind of um, medias as a young person, that tells you that your life doesn't matter, your story doesn't matter and you're completely invisible. So I'm passionate about changing the face, especially in children's literature. So I wanna start with a quote and this quote is from one of my absolute sheroes, the late great Dr. Maya Angelou. She said, there's no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside. How many of us are bearing untold stories inside? My belief is each and every single one of us is unique. We have a unique story, a unique message, a unique journey. No one can ever quite share your journey or your message or your story the way that you can. Your story, your message or your journey could be the very one needed to connect to that one person who needs to hear it the most. According to statistics, 85% of people want to become an author. Out of that 85%, only 84%, only five go on to fulfill their dreams. To me, that's 79% of stories lost, 79% of voices silenced, 79% of books that will never, will always be unread, buried. To me, that is unacceptable. So if you have an idea, you have a story. It's so important to just to use this time, especially as we have lots of time during, well, a lot of us have extra time during lockdown to really get those books written and published. We never know the legacy that we can leave. I'm gonna share a little bit about my story, but I really wanna give you something of worth and value, especially if you are an, author, an aspiring author. I wanna give you three tips that you need to know before you publish your book. So a little bit about me before we start. As I said, my name's Daniela. I'm from age four. I remember being asked at school and by adults, what is it that you want to do? And it was always the same. I'm going to be an author. And that was, <laughs> my plan was to become an author at 40 when I've retired and stay at home and publish books all day. Uh, the reality is I published seven books before my 36th birthday and I have so many more inside me to birth. How did I set up publish, uh, Conscious Dreams Publishing? Well, it started with my own journey. So I wanted to publish my heart really is in children's fiction. So I'd written a, a fantasy novel and I thought that that was a book that I was gonna get out. But my first book that I published is called Mr. Wrong. Now men, if you're watching, don't beat me yet. You need to hear me out, hear me out. It's not a man bashing book, okay? How this came about, well, what is it first of all? It's a collection of stories written by women across the world who've encountered this infamous Mr. Wrong character. But more than that, it's a place where we can share our stories in a safe place and self-discover. I am a real believer that our internal world, our external world, reflects our internal world. So if we keep on attracting the same sort of person, the same sort of circumstance, the same sort of situation, we need to look at our belief systems within. There's also success stories and stories from men as well. So it's about really understanding each other. And my why behind the book <sighs> was because I got to, this is written into, this is published in 2014, but I got to a stage where my friends were saying, Danny, how are you meeting these people? It's like replacing Pete with Paul, I don't understand. And I said, 
they kept, they kept saying to me, you need to write a book. I said, okay, look, if I meet one more, I'll write a book. I guess you can all work out I met one more. So, <laughs> but my why behind the book was because, you know, I come from, my mother is a strict West Indian woman. So if you can relate to me, just type in the, the chat box, let me know, I'd love to know. But in that culture, it is you're strong, you keep walking, you have issues, you keep going, you don't discuss your problems, you sweep things under the carpet, and you certainly don't air your dirty laundry. So I got, yep, <laughs> I got to the stage where I was going through so much pain, experiencing so much, and, you know, friends, even my sister would say, you know, what happened to so-and-so? And I would say, nothing, don't worry, eh, next, move on, because that's how I was taught. And I realized actually never dealing with this inside is actually what's causing me to repeat the same thing. So I'm never having that self, self reflection time and I'm not having an, a, a platform to really discuss this. And so that's what the book really was about really going inside and, and looking at our belief systems about love relationships, um, men as well. And for men, women. So it was a, all about alert, providing a platform for, for a learning experience in terms of my why, which I'm going to go into a bit later, in terms of relationship books, now I don't know women, men, if you read relationship books, but I can certainly talk from the, the female perspective. Books for us, when it comes to relationship, are all about what to say, how to say it, how to behave, what to do, how to play games in some in instances in order to get a man. But nothing that told us how to truly love ourselves, what that actually really meant, how to really understand and demonstrate our values, how to ask for what we want and need how to forgive, you know, the power of forgiveness, the power of intention setting, the power of learning from our stories, changing the stories, changing our belief systems. I couldn't find anything like that. So I wanted to use real life stories where we could really have an open dialogue. Now, getting it published was another story, okay? <laughs> so this is what I did. The first thing I did is I got a book called Getting Published by Harry Bingham. Step one, it said, was to write a query letter. What's a query letter? So a query letter is like a one page CV, let's say, or cover letter that tell that when you're applying for agents, who you are, what your book is about, why you've written it, and then you know a little bit about the marketplace. Sent that off along with three chapters or the first 10 pages of my manuscript to various agents. And if anyone's ever applied for an agent, it's just in the chat box, let me know. Just say, yes, I'm familiar because I see some people smiling. OK, so normally it takes between three to six months to hear from them. What did I do? I stopped writing and I waited and I waited and I waited. After about four months, let's say, all the letters started rolling in. I say all the letters, I mean, probably about three. OK, and it was all about the similar sort of stuff, you know, great writing capability, really witty. You know, this is on trend or maybe it's not. Maybe we're looking for something else. However, we're looking for somebody who's got more of a platform. Platform? What do you mean platform? I just want to write. Now, you're going to do that for me, right? They were asking me for marketing plans. They are asking me about my demographic. They wanted to see evidence of a following. They, they asked for so much more now um, since that we're in the digital age. You know, proof of concept, proof of people wanting to read this book, proof of a platform. How am I going to market the book? So basically it was a no. <laughs> and so what I did was I actually got one of the letters saying, because I said, this is going to spur me on to get this done by hook or by crook. I am publishing this. But what I did is they tell you what not to do, which was to apply to traditional publishing companies. So I just went, something about that rejection made, made me want to face more for some weird reason. So I did what they tell you not to do. I was applying to HarperCollins, Random House, Penguin, you know, the big five. And while I sent off my, my proposal, my um, the first three chapters, what I did is I waited and I waited and I waited and I stopped writing. Then all the letters came in. In reality, it was one. Daniela, great writing capability, really talented. This is really interesting. You know, all of these sorts of words, okay? However, we don't accept unsolicited authors which I knew, I knew that, I knew that. Well, I don't know why I did it. I just wanted to see how far I could take it. So, but I needed that, I needed that rejection because what happened then was this, this light bulb came on in my mind, like this, this epiphany moment that I hadn't been writing, I hadn't been waiting for a response. I'd actually been waiting for validation. And during that time I'd stopped writing. 
I was waiting for somebody to tell me, you know, you've got great writing capability. Your story matters. Everyone else's story in there also matters. You matter. And at that point, I realized it's not about waiting for validation. It's not about seeking permission. It's not about looking up there for somebody who you'll probably never, ever meet to tell you what you have to publish is good enough. And I knew by hook or by crook, I mean, I'd spent a lot of time. I'd also raised money to publish this book, so I had to do it. You know, I'd spoken to women all over the world, women from Canada, America, the UK, Europe, um, Jamaica, who had sent in their stories. Some of them are, you know, from the funny, funny ones of overcoming dating disasters to really overcoming serious issues such as abuse, domestic violence, and, and, and really coming through that. And I, I had to honor those stories. I had to honor those stories. So I realized if I knew that this was worth and value, and I know it is because I've had men and women come to me and say, you've helped me to get out of an unhealthy relationship. I understand the importance of loving myself. I need to listen to my partner. I need to respect women more. This is some of the feedback that I've got just from this, this book here. So if I know I can have that impact through a book and other people's stories as well as mine, then I felt it was my absolute duty to, to get that book published. So I think my main message of, of my story really is, it's not about waiting for validation. And I published my book. I did quite well with the book. I'm not a massive thing about the whole bestseller thing, but I did beat, I did get on the bestseller list and I did beat Steve Harvey's book. What's it called? Think like a lady. I think, Act like a lady, think like a man. That was it. So that kind of made me feel happy. I got some good press coverage on that. Um, and, you know, I've managed to sell quite, quite a lot of books. Um, so I enjoyed that. And from then, because I didn't have an idea of setting up a publishing company, my, my, my profession is teaching. I love working with young people. I keep trying to get, go out and I keep getting sucked in. But I love working with young people. I love mentoring and I had so many women, especially coming to me saying, you know, how did you do that? Can you help me publish my book? And I was helping people to publish their book, just doing it as a labor of love, um, getting them distribution, hooking them up with editors, professional editors, typesetters, designers, getting their books done. And they started doing really well. And I was like, hmm, I need to get, I need to be getting paid for this. <laughs> this needs to be a business. You know, what do I love? Mentoring. And I love literature. Those are the two of my favorite things. So I set up Conscious Dreams Publishing, haven't looked back. Um, as I say, I've published over 70, we're on number 77, 77 authors so far, two of which are on right now, I can see, so I'm gonna pick them up. Uh, Carol Nelson, her book is called Dolly May and the Magical Enchanted Garden. So it features many different black role models. So here, we've got Nelson Mandela, but we've got the lesser known. It's important for young people to know about these characters. Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, Dorothy Vaughan, the, um, the, the scientists here. So it's about teaching young people and seeing, getting them to see physical representation, representations of themselves, um, as well as leaders, current and past. And then we have uh, Ingrid, David Riddell, big up Ingrid. <laughs> she goes into schools now like Patty and runs workshops. Um, does her performance poetry so her book's called make it shine cultural and inspirational performance poetry big up ingrid i saw you come on so i just grabbed your books quickly so that's really what we're about no worries um how much time we got left because i want to crack into giving you three tips before you publish your book three more minutes three minutes two minutes three minutes Okay, cool. One minute in each one. So the first one is know your why. It's so, so, I wish I never asked now. It's so, so important to understand why you wrote your book. That is the best way that you're going to connect to your reader. So before you even start, make sure you know why you're writing the book. As I said, I wrote my book because I wanted to unite, inspire and empower women, give us a safe platform to share our stories so that we can learn and self-discover together in a space where there's, a, where's a, where there's no shame. Second tip is know your audience, really important. Whenever I offer free 30 minute consultations, I always ask who's your audience and I always get everyone. Your book is never for everyone. When you're saying everyone, you're doing your core audience a huge disservice. So get to know your audience. And then I often get, it's for women. What sort of woman? 
What are their belief systems? What, ch what challenges are they facing, especially if we're writing a non-fiction book? What's their demographic? What's their background? Um, what eight, the way you'd speak to an 18 year old is gonna be completely different to a 60 year old. The language is completely different. The issues that they're facing are completely different. So just be so clear. What point in their life are they at? Are they about to get married? Are they a single mother or are they in a relationship? Where, where are they in their life? Just know them. The clearer you are about your audience, the better you're going to connect to your reader and everything is about connection. Know where you're going to find them. What events do they go to? Where do you need to speak at? That leads me to tip three is to create a vision for your book. What do I mean by vision? It's not about what the front cover looks like. It look, it's all about planning. That first year of your book's life is so important. So what speaking engagements are you going to get? How are you going to get in front of your audience? How are you going to promote your book? How can you use digital marketing to get out there? you know, to a global audience, what bookstores are you going to try and get into, what press coverage are you going to get for your book. So really, really important to create and plan the bigger vision. I just want to end on a quote from James Baldwin. He says, I've got to get it up now. You write in order to change the world. If you alter, even by a millimeter, the way people look at reality, then you can change it. That to me is a, a quote that I love because it shows the power of our pen, the power that we have to share our stories, to tell our stories authentically without being changed by anybody. So that our younger generation who are going to lead the way can really have a legacy that they can look back on and be proud of and to carry the mantle. So I'm going to just leave with that because I think I've gone over my three minutes there. If you want to connect with me, I'm offering free 30 minute consultations. I'll pop my details in the chat box. Thank you so much.